Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Victor Kostrub, who's the CEO of Fine Designs. Victor, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you, Michael. Hey, so um, get us a little bit of your background of your entrepreneurial journey. I always love to hear how people um, get into business for themselves. You know, what was it at uh, what point in your life did you say, I must be an entrepreneur? Well, it started way before uh, I even came uh, to U.S. It was uh, my background. <clears throat> I was raised, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I was raised in uh, Soviet Union. And uh, that culture alone is not uh, about, hey, you can do this. Uh, you have so much potential. Uh, there is a goal and you can achieve that. It was all about uh, like, this is what you have to do. So if, uh, nobody pay attention to you. So there, there was a time um, came in my uh, development and I'm about to make a choice whether I'm staying in one school or whether I'm going to college and I made the decision to go to college because really I didn't know where to go I uh, I was blind but I knew for sure I don't want to stay here once I mentioned that to my father my father said no this is not the, the road you want to take because you will be uh, like a cheap labor, he assumed, and he didn't want me to be like a cheap labor. And I said, no, i just sick and tired of staying in this because I just don't see a meaning. So my father gave me a lesson. At that time, um, like a, third, a, a person with authority, a person that you respect, you look up to, and he says, uh, son, uh, things doesn't work in life where you look where your passion is. The things, the way it work is you have to just pay attention to your responsibility and uh, uh, learn how to do them, uh, accept them. And in this life, he said, nobody is go after their passion. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was something that um, I couldn't stand. So I still um, uh, was rebellion to that because I had a spirit in me, faith in me that no, life does, shouldn't work this way. Even if the system like this, life shouldn't work this way. So it was a time now I'm in college and uh, I was a good student because uh, as a good student, you get the, all of the benefits uh, of uh, being a good student. And then once I... Um, uh, realize this is my future after this college. Again, I lost the passion in my teacher now repeats pretty much the same what my father said. She said, you have so much potential in you as a good student. What are you doing with your life? And I said, well, because I just don't see the meaning in this. I just don't see the future through this. And she said, same thing. And life doesn't work this way. You just have to accept the responsibility and go with that. And basically uh, force your will, in other words. And uh, uh, I accept that, but not for, for long. And a um, month later or two months later, I uh, uh, dropped the college, even though I was a good student. And uh, I dropped the college. And I said to myself, I don't know uh, what is my calling. And, um, but one thing for sure, I know this is not the direction I need to follow. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if I know this, I would have to take a step and move away from it. And that's what I did. I didn't, I didn't have a plan, but what I did back then, I think God heard me. And uh, what I think for our Heavenly Father, it's important that we truly become genuine and we accept who we are and we're not afraid to be who we are. And um, it's kind of from there, it's a history. Uh, so, uh, so I follow my passion, even being there, I follow my passion. I start, you know, trading cars and uh, pretty much uh, 
Uh, by the age of 18, uh, I, was, I was already driving a car by doing a lot of trades. And uh, keep in mind, in Soviet Union, my father could not afford to buy a car. The, uh, it's like um, to have a, anybody who has a car, that's, that's considered to be very wealthy people back there. And so, And your son is 18, <laughs> yeah. already driving a car. And that's be, by doing those trades, the, the things that I was doing so passionately about. So... <laughs> Um, and then when I moved to the United States, I uh, obviously, you know, you're new, you're um, uh, across the bro- board, your English very poor. So it's not like I had the idea, hey, I'm going to go and open the business. None of my friends, uh, none of the other immigrants that I know that opened the business. So I go, I work for the company and um, I really want to give my best to this uh, um employer so i um, want to be promoted and move uh, but then one one once there was a situation where i don't want to go into the details but uh, pretty much uh, i was um, um i was there was like a a, a, a dryer and their products of like a silkscreen products they were going through that this dryer and my job was to simply take them and to put into the boxes so as i came i uh one of uh, i uh, uh basically sit down and was doing this job by sit down and my one of the main manager general manager came and he was just like a big boss and he screamed at me you have to stand up and do this job by standing so i argue uh, why uh, it's not like i'm uh, not doing a quality job so anyway the the long story short he allowed at first and then after he discussed that with Big boss, he came back and still made me stand. Uh, so that was a very humiliating um, uh, experience. Sure. And at that time, I just had the revelation in myself, and I said, "There is, I would never work for anybody who is uh, uh, not respecting me." And um, I felt like uh, at that time, I received a vision: what would be a culture if i if you built a culture with the respect the tr- the genuine respect not the not the respect that everybody says i like you but at the same time they don't care but the genuine respect when you genuinely respect other people when you genuinely care for their talents and you really help them to release those talents as they were where they fit the most where they're the best at what they do what would that be and i kind of like uh, fall in love with that with that dream and it wasn't too long when i went into the business so it wasn't even idea to make money it was idea about the culture it's about this culture i was oh i was uh, simply obsessed with that and uh, so as a starting process of hiring when it started we, we start hiring first people i said look i would never uh, call you to my office because you're late for 15 minutes because like this is how i was uh, uh, was uh, punished when i was working for somebody if you were late five minutes they want to show you that this is who the boss yeah. so i said i will not as long as you respect me you you respect your job and you value that i will i will always respect you and i will be, give you the room uh, to grow and i will give you your freedom and that's for some people it was uh, very unusual but uh, after maybe a few years, I start receiving like a gift card that normally boss would not receive, like a huge big card. So thank you. And uh, especially if the people had the uh, terrible experience working uh, elsewhere, and now they experience different uh, culture, they just couldn't believe it at first. Uh, uh, so for example, if I see somebody is came to work but make pretend that they are working, I would want to ask, what is going on? What is going on in your life? And one time I talked to one lady and she said, well, look, I, I just came from visiting a doctor. And she said, and the doctor said, uh, look, your, your old DNA, your mother, your, your sisters, they all uh, have this depression um, of history. So you need to start taking under depression. And she said, well, I'm just sitting and thinking, I can't recognize my mother anymore. My sister, uh, should I take that or not? Yeah. So seeing person in this position, I would want to really take care of that first. Her uh, uh, physical being, her spiritual being. Why would she? Why would I want to force her 
hey, you need to work. I don't care. So I would take care of her first, you know, say, hey, go. I want I want you to go for three days. This is the book I want you to read. This is a great book that helped me, for example. It's very positive, very motivating. And uh, But don't worry. We'll be keep paying you. So it, this is kind of like the culture we created. And uh, within time, uh, we... So we started with an office in Washington State, and then we uh, the, we simply grew to state after state, state after the after state, and uh, probably after first ten years, we we invested so much in, into infrastructure system. Um, I don't remember, you know, thinking about luxury, going to buy myself something or go experience like a great restaurant. It was all about the business and how to build it well. And I, and I uh, knew how you can build it well if you have a good foundation. And to me, foundation, it uh, translates into, uh, into um, uh, trust, uh, into trust, uh, because especially when you start and nobody knows you, they, you really have to build what we call today, it's a branding. But behind branding, to me, it's a meaning of trust. So I remember there was, from the beginning, I sent the crew guys uh, to, to the event in the Connecticut state. You know, we're in Washington, that's a Connecticut state. So the people that I hired, I had my manager who hired those people, they were local from that state. I never seen those people. So this is a young people that they come to work what we are doing we're selling event merchandise on site at the sporting events so for example there is a gymnastic uh, national championship so our company goes to create the design for this event and then on the time of the event we would set up a booth with a large variety of sports where t-shirts sweatshirts jackets that everything comes with this official event logo and then we plus we're giving them a chance to mag to customize that with their names in the back their prints on the sleeve like places where they achieve and this is a very very uh, great service yeah. and uh, so those two guys that we sent that they sent to they came drunk and uh, with that they uh, they uh, they start treating those people really badly making jokes of the people in line so for example the lady says what do you think what should i order for my daughter a medium or or a small and the guy just laughing and say no you need an extra large not a medium lady so with that i received a phone call from this event organizer and she said i will do everything that there is nothing left of your company. Uh, so when I received that voicemail, uh, and we are talking about the foundation, the things that I was trying to put all of my effort into build this foundation, to me that was like nothing left of the foundation. So, but what was important to me that now this lady assumes like the people you send, this is must be who you are. This yeah. is who, uh, uh, this is probably how you treat your wife and the people surrounding you. So I was just, uh, if I forgot about the business. All I want to focus on how can I show this lady this is not who we are. And I really, really want to repent. I, and I really, really sorry, but how do I show that? So I called my manager and I said, I want you to get ready. Uh, you need to go and uh, meet up with this uh, event organizer, Dev, because you're the one who sends, sends those salespeople. So, but before you go, I said, go and buy the biggest bouquet of flowers and the biggest uh, chocolate uh, uh, box. So um, at first he didn't want it. He said uh, he was reluctant to go because he said it doesn't make a sense to go. This is what she said. She was not going to change her mind. But I said, "This is no, you, you have to do. But uh, plus, when you arrive, I want you to go on your knees and really, really beg for her mm -hmm. forgiveness. <laughs> so uh, he, he, he does go to buy flowers. He drives for eight hours because that's how far he had to go to her office. And then when he arrives, she was at work and he goes on, her, on his knees <laughs> and start begging for forgiveness. Wow. <laughs> So the lady couldn't b believe it. She just started uh, hugging him and uh, crying and uh, and uh, rejoicing. So that same lady, she said, who said, <clears throat> "I will do everything to destroy your company." Now she said, "I will do everything to uh, push uh, to yes. say that 
everybody has to hire, uh, hire fine designs now because he would show them this is not who we are. We, this is, uh, if people take care of uh, their mistake, uh, everybody could make mistake. But if you, if you truly genuinely say sorry, it's going to show that. So, uh, so it doesn't mean that we ma- never made the mistake, but it just means that we truly care whether this is inside the business to create the culture or whether this is outside the business. We, we want to create a genuine relationship because, like, for example, the people that we are building the business with, this is, like I said, event organizer. And what I understood from the beginning, wow, they're doing such a great thing for our nation. Because if it wasn't for them, where were those kids would be? Because they organized those events, and it's not only to organize the events, but uh, but behind there is a there 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 is a movement, there is a youth movement because you, you they are challenged those children to get up from their from their uh, seats, from their sofas, from their TV stations, and go. And exercise, and after exercise, go to compete. And uh, in order to compete, go to those tournaments, you really have to train really well. It's like, forget about your life now. You're not going to play games. You're not going to go and do drugs. You're not going to go and drink because now you have different value system and you're really, really going to uh, work hard. And that's what they do. That's what they motivate. That's why by putting those coaches behind and um, and motivate those kids to train and uh, and actually uh, help uh, help them to think the way like putting the goals dream about those goals go to become true olympians so uh, so when i saw that i said wow i really want to be in harmony with them because their values my values and so that's what really inspire me to be in this business and uh, so i never look at this as like for example some of the events that we do they're profitable in some of those events you go to and you lose money uh for example imagine you you send people to uh, some event in california you have to spend so much money in um, in preparing the goods, uh, so much money in your salespeople, so much money in traveling, and thousands and thousands, and then boom, you have a negative. Mm-hmm. So, but I I never saw this as negative because I'm investing in re- in the relationship. We do something much greater than at this moment a, sh- a short loss. I look at always as a long term and long term in investment in a relationship because at first I do have to show those people again about emphasizing about trust. I'm not there only to take my profit away from this single event. I'm there for something much deeper and I want to show them. And within years, those people could see that. And that's what makes the difference us and say the competitors. And it's uh, a lot more than what you see outside. It's actually in roots, in roots. And that's why we became the biggest in this industry. Our company does right now over 100 events each weekend. We do, we started with one event, and today we do over 100 events all over the United States, some of them in Europe, some of them in Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, because for one fact, is uh, where this those genuine relationship in are inside the company and the genuine relationship uh, with a trust outside the company where we build those relationships. Uh, so, uh, if we in in another uh, principles that we we also follow by is again that connects to to the trust because as you grow. To, uh, we, uh, remember, we started with one event, and then one one day you have all uh, from going from ten events, you have twenty. But it doesn't mean that I had those people line up uh, uh, from saying twenty salespeople to fifty salespeople. It's like, uh, and you couldn't prepare within like uh, a week so quickly. How do you do that? 
Well, simply you could just call and say, sorry, we're not going to be able to do that. That's what normally people do. But no, I, I said from the beginning, this is we will never do this. If we made our commitment, if somebody trusts us and we, we gave our commitment, we're never going to say, sorry, we, we're not going to make it. Or, sorry, your event is too small for us. We would never say that. So whether this is uh, going from 50 to 100, and uh, as long as you say to yourself, as long as you believe we're going to make it, we will make it. And uh, so there was times where you have the people in Texas, for example, but then there is a lack of people in California and they have more events than in Texas. So, But because you gave a commitment, we would have to send the people from Texas to California to cover those events and forget about profit because by now by sending those people f flying from there pretty much eats all of your profit by doing so so it's it's it, it seems like it's not a smart decision but it was always about uh, you know the commitment about the trust about building the foundation so after we build the foundation you know you just start grow and you start to receiving more invitation and then as you go on a bidding process they choose you more than they choose mm. somebody else because they see the difference and uh, yes you can pretty much it's not like we're sending people to the moon and there is hard uh, to find uh, how to compete with somebody who sends people to the moon but it's easy to copy the business like us um you know go and sell merchandise the uh, way you do it that's, yeah but that's yes, the way the we do you, it yes the trust and respect it to me the the values you are talking about internally to the employees of the company and externally to your customers um that lays such a solid foundation for both your employees to see and it re reinforces that to them and then also word gets around and i want to go back to that example about the manager driving eight hours with the flowers and crawling on his knees um talk a little bit about how that built upon to the next time that maybe even that manager or that customer um um, that deepened the relationship to new customers or it deepened the values that your employees then would solidify in working at your company once they saw that act right there? Uh, I, I think this is such a great uh, question uh, uh, because you're as a smart man, you, you, you pretty much uh, uh, you, you found why uh, the culture is there. Yes, yeah. truly. You first you preach about the the culture, but this was a great example that uh, how we uh, you you show it because people felt that because like even he tasked me that uh, that manager. Hey, Victor, why? Why would we want to do this? It's eight hours drive. Uh, just say, uh, send a car. Just say how sorry you are. You can give her a phone call. But uh, they sense in my heart, this is how serious it is. I will, I will not just send a car. You, you, uh, we, we commit a sin. We commit something that's so terrible that it's not, is not enough to send a car. So, yes, I internally, that's pretty much... Uh, uh, set a foundation. It's it was uh, at first you preach, but now this is your character. This is truly who you are, and we know that. And uh, people have a choice. They either come on this bus because now they know the direction where this bus goes, and yes. or they can exit this bus and say no. I don't share those values. I don't think this is the way I want to go because I really don't generally care for the people that much. So it was the choice for people to make. So you're right. That's that's pretty much said the 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 guidelines for uh, for for where we're going. You know, and I think that probably if you look back over some of these um, initial core values that you really expressed from an early age, realizing you wanted freedom and flexibility and respect and that and you now have had that be such uh, a strong part of your DNA that you have put that into your company. Do you have employees now that have been with you for many, many years because they uh, so much enjoy working with you? Yes, uh, we uh, the company uh, is 
we will be celebrating our 30th year in two years. So obviously we've been around for that long and we have people who stay with us for that long, for almost 30 years. We still have people like that there, but they are in the management position now. They started with being regular salesperson, but they've been promoted to be, um, you know, general managers and also like uh, licensing. So it's like a franchisees. Uh, we we call yes. it uh, in in a different states. Uh, so this they are just amazing amazing leaders. This is uh, the the business fine designs would never be as where we are if it wasn't for those pe- uh, people. They they um, also follow that that uh, value system, and I believe they share the same value system because it was inside of them. I pretty much helped them to unleash that that potential uh, but it was inside of them and that's why they came to the to the right boss uh, however there was people who i knew and they knew they they're not committed in in, in business fine designs you know for generations or uh, because uh, if it's it's we don't have enough management positions for people to to take so there's people who comes you know and do some uh, regular office work or uh, just sales people to go to those events uh, but they are still uh, going to college for example at the same time but i always said I, uh, when I said, I really care for you, I really do. I will, I want to, and, and I, I said, look at this, look my business as an investment. I'm part of like another college system. I will invest in you and you will see the fruits that will, uh, that uh, later in your life. So even though there's some people are not with me now, but I still have communication from those, whether this is Thanksgiving or Christmas, I always received a card and the thank you note, a big thank you note that says a lot of people says if it wasn't for for me, if it wasn't for for them working for Fine Designs, they would never get this job. They would never get mm-hmm. that business. But because of that, uh, of this DNA that we share, that the training that received, that the uh, how we help uh, help them to think the the the, the way they are thinking now is really they they see. Uh, the credit in that, and they pretty much uh, connect that, uh, why they are there and why they are so successful now. Yeah, it sounds to me like you um, took a business that is very simple to do, like screen printing and promotional items, and then you created a unique way to deliver it with strategic alliances with these events and personalizing it. But then once you got that business started, you started kind of stepping back and saying, okay, this is now going to be a training ground for the people I bring on. I'm going to inspire my employees. I'm going to inspire my clients and strategic alliances to achieve more and i hear you describe this and it sounds like everyone you come in contact with is coming away with a lot more than just a traditional business relationship it's a friendship it's a mentoring relationship and i think that is uh, so much further beyond just a traditional come work at my company and have a nice weekend uh, I'm uh, I'm <laughs> I'm glad you're saying that. Uh, it's a uh, you're just reading my mind. It's like <laughs> I'm thinking, hey, Mike, d- did you ever work for me? Did you? <laughs> it's just like I'm I'm just impressed. I'm just really impressed <laughs> how you how well you do this interview. It's like you know me really really well. Here's here's a, an example of what you just said. Uh, many years ago, that was like about maybe 27 years ago. No, no, not 27. About 20 years ago, I. Uh, uh, plenty to do like uh, training, like a seminar in the state of Ohio. And you know when, uh, uh, so I contact that uh, manager in that state and I said, "Why don't you get all of your employees? I will be flying to Ohio and I will be doing some training and uh, slash seminar uh, because to me, I really w- uh, want to show like how I how much I care for those people and stuff like that." So. And, and, and do train people, how we, uh, we take care of their customers, how we sell the things. And uh, so I fly and I book that uh, like a um, uh, hotel in Ritz-Carlton right in downtown in Cleveland. And now I book like a conference room and uh, all of the people come to that conference room. Uh, so this is like seven o'clock at evening and this is like a Wednesday night. 
So obviously, uh, people uh, were reluctant to go because now they have to go because the manager said, well, yep. the big boss come and you have to come because he said everybody has to come. So <clears throat> during my presentation, after one hour of me speaking, there is a guy just uh, <laughs> uh, uh, just say, hey, I wish I knew what is this? Because when I received that phone call that we all have to be here, I thought, what a waste of time. Uh, instead of just, uh, uh, I, ha I had some plans with my wife for this evening. Now I have to go. I was just like, I was so reluctant. But here we came. This is such a great motivation. Uh, this is like, I would listen to this guy, he said, for, for days. <laughs> uh, so... And to me, it was like, hey, that's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. I really want to help young people, regardless, even if they work for my company or not. And, I, and from that moment, I received <laughs> that guy speaking. It was, he spoke to my life like uh, 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 that this is what you have to do. This is you know, your you calling. So I uh, start speaking that... to youth group to to right. uh, to thousands of people, to because uh, uh, because exactly what I struggle. I see many many people struggle. They don't have this flexibility. They don't have faith in them, and nobody helps them. Uh, but truly, if you help them to unleash that potential, if you show them uh, this is how life should be, they will be just so grateful. You know, you said uh, a few minutes ago that at some point in your life when you were younger, God was listening to me and opened up this door and you moved in this direction. Well, I have a feeling that there are hundreds and hundreds of people that said, God was listening to me and Victor walked into my life and has transformed uh, me from, you know, seeing things so small and maybe giving them the economic opportunity to work for your company. Or like you just said, maybe not. Maybe it's just a, the right word spoken at the right time to encourage and motivate people. So that's a, a powerful calling that you have in your life. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, th to me that's the best compliment. I yes. and that's what that's 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 the best compliment I can receive. Well, you uh, you are just brimming with energy and passion, and so let's wrap up this, Victor. And if someone is listening to this, thinking I need to learn more about Victor and Fine Designs, uh, what's the best way they they can reach out and learn more and connect with you? Well, uh, they could uh, listen to the podcast that I started. Uh, and not too long ago, it's um, um, Mentors by Design and with uh, Mission Matters. They could visit missionmatters.com and find out more about this great organization as well. Please visit company Find Designs, our company, finddesigns.com, and you can find out uh, where we're located and uh, about all of the events that we do and stuff like that. So that's where I would start. Excellent. Well, Victor, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.